So I was debating what to talk to you about today because um, I had something in mind. However, Kristen thwarted what I had in mind, and I kind of feel like I have to confess about it now. So I was going to be like, <coughs> <clears throat> I was going to set one off, and obviously they're not quiet. They pop when they <coughs> burst the bag. That's what they're supposed to do to release the stink. And I was going to just toss one down here under your table so that you couldn't see what it was without getting up and looking, or I guess peering around to look. And I was, I was going to ask you if you wanted to smell my new perfume, and then I was going to wait till it just burst and then ask you that. And then be like, wait for it. <laughs> just evacuate the entire house over a fart bag, because it wouldn't have been my first time I've done that. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> about uh, two years. No, Millie wasn't around. Kristen had been pregnant with Millie or right before Millie, so it was actually probably like four or five years. I have a picture of it, actually, on uh, my um, Echo. Oh, there's BJ McKnight, the clown. I forgot she was here. <laughs> I, uh, I'm glad she loves me. That's all I can say is I'm glad she loves me. It wasn't me. for you. It was so she wouldn't have to smell it when it went off because I did this before. So, uh, let me think it's because she loves me. Okay. So, I think what it uh, started out as was um, I wanted to show Trace the fart bag. And uh, when I showed him, I showed him outside, but like it didn't really smell very much because it was outside. So, the smell was kind of dissipated right away. And I said, Oh, sorry, you won't get to smell it. And I said, We'll uh, do one another time. And uh, and he was all bummed about it, so I took one to his room a little bit later after Kristen was gone. I don't remember where she was. I think she might be working or something. Um, and she came back <coughs> home right after it, it went off, and it <coughs> stuck up his room, the living room. It went up to the bedroom, but at that point, it stopped stinking and just became more like uh, mustard gas. Or not mustard gas. That's a bit extreme. That'll fucking kill you. Um, uh, pepper spray. Because it started to burn your eyes as you went upstairs. That's what was over East Liverpool for quite some time, though. <clears throat> East Liverpool, my area. And so we evacuated the house and had to sit outside for a while. Um, and I was uh, I was glared at. It was uh, it was not a good time. And I'll show you the picture I've got for it. I'm sorry. I should have taken allergy pills before coming to your house. <clears throat> well, I can't help but we have 500 cats. I, I was going to say, I don't know if it's the dogs or your kids that I'm allergic to. I'm sure it's the kids. <laughs> I've been for some time now. It might be the kids because he all he hasn't loved me this much in so long. And now all of a sudden, like, my eyes are itchy. All right. There it is. When I told, when we all evacuated outside because we couldn't breathe in the house. And Kristen was making that face. I don't think you can lie. Uh, maybe you can see. I can't no. zoom in either. I'll, I'll send the picture to the group uh, after we're done. She looks so pissed at you. <laughs> she was. And that's why she, as she hit him. I know for a while they were in the hallway in the um, in the uh, cabinet on the wall. And I thought that uh, they were still there. And then when I couldn't find them, I asked her where they were and she wouldn't answer me. Mm -hmm. So it made me real sad. See, when I heard about that earlier, I'm like, this this. This motherfucker better not be asking to fuck with me. This this better not happen when I'm there. Like okay. I I will murder you, I was gonna you ask, ginger bitch. I was gonna ask you what you thought about my new cologne. I would have murdered you, you ginger bitch. <laughs> Bro, your dog's ass kills me. I don't need to smell anything else. Mm hmm It's bad. It's bad. And you switch their food, it smells like he just shit liquid lava <clears throat> all over under the bed. I know, because he sleeps downstairs with us. Oh, yeah, because I, I purposely don't deal with that shit. <laughs> no, I'm farting. I but. think, I definitely think that when I stay over right now, you, sh you should have the dogs upstairs. You already take my wife. You must have the dogs, too. <laughs> have, you, have you had experiences with these fart bags, though, other than um, what I, my devious plan was going to entail? Not, I don't think, no. You don't think no? I definitely remember your story, um, <laughs> because come on, let's not lie, your wife's been in my life for, oh, like 15 years, at least 15 years at this point. Math is real hard without the penises, huh? 
I wanted to say 10, and then I'm like, wait, no, that's not right, because I was younger than 15 when she came into my life. Well, um, I I had used them before. Uh, there was one other time that it got me in trouble, and it was a rough start to college. It was my first time in college. I've been to two different colleges and changed my major to three different things, so I, I really fucked up I've college. I've only changed my major once. Well, technically, I added a major before I dropped a major. Well, uh, what I did, and I don't know why I did it, because I'm not a prankster. I wasn't a prankster as a teenager. I'm not a prankster now. Um, and yet, and yet, you were just gonna, you were just telling me about what you were gonna do to me tonight. Okay, which... maybe a little bit then. But um, <laughs> I, I, I went into the elevator, and I think I was getting ready to write it down. <clears throat> yeah, I was writing it down for my my dorm to go out and uh, just kind of explore the city. And I took a fart bag with me. I don't know where I got it. I don't know why I had it. Apparently, it, it came with me from my parents' house, in which I thought, this is absolutely essential for college. <laughs> or uh, I went out early, another day and found a, a gag shop that carried them and thought that would be the greatest thing in the world. I don't know. I can't tell you. That was, that was Too long ago? 15 years ago. Wow. So I uh, 15 went. 15 years ago was very exciting times for us. Sure I met was. Kristen, and you were in college with fart bags. <laughs> I like to remember the <laughs> women that I was with, too, but that's another matter entirely. Not... Obviously, Kristen's the best, otherwise we wouldn't have married her and had kids with her. I don't know. She's kind of scary. It's almost like submission out of fear. She's the best, don't lie. In fact, Russ, she makes some good food sometimes. So uh, when I went down to go explore the city, I took a fart bag with me into the elevator, and I waited until it was about to slow down to my floor to get off, and I released the fart bag and dropped it in the center. And I, my thought was, I don't know who's going to be the next person to get on this elevator, but it's going to be really funny when they walk in. It just smells like shit. And as soon as the door opened, I walked off and I kept going because I recognized the two people that were getting on were two of my resident advisors for the building. And so they got a good look at my face because obviously I seemed suspicious. And then before the doors closed, I heard the pop sound where it started to release the odor. And I'm pretty sure they use surveillance cameras. However, I feel like because of the um, the anger that they would have been in, they would have seen a freshman and uh, remembered that face for a long time to come. In fact, they did remember it because they kept in my file um, as a student that this incident happened as a harmless prank and that they talked with me not to do things like this again. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And when I when I applied to be a resident advisor, like six months later, they boarded up my student records and they're like, "You dropped a fart bomb on us, didn't you?" I said, "I didn't drop it on you, but yeah, I wasn't targeting you guys. That would be just any random person." And uh, he's like, "Okay, they hired me anyway." Maybe they thought. Where, where was this? Uh, the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, which is no longer a school. Ah, yeah, I've heard about them. So I guess what I'm saying about fart bags and all of this, I don't know if Karen cut this together to be smooth, like a lumpy charcoal passing through your colon. I don't fucking know. Um, but in any case, fart bags are dangerous. And if they'll get you in trouble with student officials, <coughs> they'll get you in trouble with your wife. Well, maybe you should just toss the fart bags not I, in your house. I think I need to do something. Take them to work. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> you already put yeah. a hot dog and a monster in your pocket. <sighs> it's fine. Take them to work. What I was going to say is I need to do something um, memorializing to cherish the day that I forced myself, Trace and Kristen, out of the house because of a fart bag in his room. That also <clears throat> ruined his sheet because it leaked out onto his sheet. And it's just, you couldn't get rid of the smell for anything. You definitely don't need to repeat that, especially with the two littles finally in bed. And I'm sure Ollie's probably sleeping I'm at this point. I'm going to wait until you guys are moved in. I'm going to bring down as many as I can smash and release before <laughs> they start popping. And I'm going to release them in the air vents. I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> And then we're all going to meet outside for a group photo of everyone glaring at Anthony, wishing he were dead. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I think it would be a great story. We could make an addition to the story about uh, us having to stand outside. 
and it would be like a, a it would be like a family growing photo. Oh, you're just adopting us into the family now. I mean, like we already are family, but you're adopting us more into the family, like more of the immediate family. I want you to think of yourself not as immediate family, but rather the extra free help. I kind of <laughs> am, yeah. Gather round, we've got stories to tell How the human race should be erased from space We're horrible people and deserve to die If you don't believe me, then I'll tell you why We've caused genocides and mass extinction Humans causing bad pollution Amazon is burning down California's on shaky ground Ted Cruz and Cancun people deny the moon Gun crime is on the rise, hypocrisy and evil lies Leadership is on vacation, God is doing tax evasion Police increasing jurisdiction overdue for extinction Welcome back to another episode of Overdue for Extinction, the podcast where we set out to prove whether or not the human race is overdue for an extinction level event. I am Anthony. I'm slightly uh, buzzed and uh, a little bit tipsy, so I apologize for what Karen isn't able to. <laughs> we can't ask her to make miracles here, so she's going to do what she can with this episode and, and, um, and our conditions. And I'm Kate, and I'm a four loco in, so there you go. Uh, you're behind. That explains everything. That explains everything right there. I'm a four loco this, in. This, well, I mean, you drink for all of them, I think. I do. I do drink for all of them, but I don't... I'm never a four loco in at this point. <laughs> like, I'm usually sipping on it as we drink, uh, like, as we record and whatnot. Um, I don't know. It's, like, this weekend was just crazy, though. It, it was just a mess between the Discord drama and it's still going on. And I think I was definitely a little overstimulated with an extra child wanting my attention so much. He was so, like, oh my god. He was asking me for George. He was, like... He was very neat and able for anybody else. Oh my god. He was a completely different child today. That was a bullshit. So yeah, I did, I did start drinking early. I apologize, but... Here we are. Yeah, I don't typically drink during the... Actually, I think I occasionally have a beer. Occasionally, but you're on your second one, so yeah. there's that. This is usually how our um, bonus episodes start, which is a great plug for our Patreon. It so, is! So for as little as $3 a month, you can get bonus content where everything is completely uncut. Karen will do the very best she can for this episode, despite what we've done for her. Patreon is completely uncut, and we drink a whole lot more. Yes, uh, we, we last finished off a bottle of Parrot Bay. It's still here. And the episode before that, we were doing shots uh, to jokes. Crown peach. Crown peach, indeed. Well, and then we ended up not just doing shots to jokes, but shots for every segment. Yeah, I think at one point we were just trying to see how drunk we get the other person because I kept giving you uh, while you were talking. I do think I do think I did at least two extra shots, and you did. I don't know. And I lost an ale after, and apparently I ended up on the basement floor and I ate noodles that I don't remember. Like, I woke up in the morning and I saw them and I'm like, those would have been good last night. And then Kristen's like, do you remember eating noodles last night? And I'm like, I actually ate them? So that's the kind of content you can come for. That and also we spent 10 minutes uh, trying to tape up a cardboard box to the window because it was beaming in my face. But they also get a special shout out. That's true. You do for for even just the dollar tier. For even um, just a dollar, you don't get the uh, access to the bonus episodes and bonus content of the Patreon. But we will give you a shout out. We gave Brian some weird one last episode. I don't even remember what it was we said for him or to him. I don't know. I feel like we did tell him that the second bonus episode was about him, though. Yeah, we... and that's only because Brian is our only Patreon right now. So. You gotta start somewhere, though. Guys, hello. Like if it's city picks, you want, I'll, I'll fucking do it. But you know, let me. Oh, let you'll me do know. it, okay? Because at one point we did promise my OnlyFans. <laughs> Whatever we get this <laughs> content, that's gonna be. So, so right now, okay. So at the mo- as of this moment, the um, um, contest is over. Uh, we didn't have any entries for it, did we? Not as of right now. We are recording two weeks prior to the episode's release, though I believe. One or two weeks. Oh. So there's still time for people, but by the time we're hearing this, it's over anyway. So, um, 
yeah, right now he's our only patron. Uh, I, don't, I was going somewhere with that. I don't remember where. I don't know. I was somehow jumping from Patreon to the contest, and I don't know what the connection was. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I just remembered to make sure to mention you get a shout-out because we love you. The smoking thing is not going to work out. We should probably stop doing that. <laughs> no, it's fine. All right, so um, however messy the beginning has been, we shall trudge on because that is what we do here. Despite uh, how derailed we get, we find some way to bring it back on to at least following adjacent to I the really track. want to do this. Come on, let's do it. The, the, uh, the icebreaker? Yes! Okay, all right. Well, we won't delay anymore, even though we probably will. So, I guess... Let's uh, tell a fun story. Let's continue our co-writing. <laughs> With everything else out of the way, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this, yes! this week's icebreaker. Oh, Justin. <sighs> what now? How much does a polar bear weigh? How much does a polar bear weigh? Enough to break the ice. Ah, ah, ah. I hate it here. All right, so this week's icebreaker, we're changing things up. Uh, I decided to look over a bunch of improv games that uh, improv uh, actors and comedians, whatever they call themselves, do, um, just to kind of warm up. And I figure we'll put some of them in our rotation for um, for these icebreakers. Uh, so the one we have today is called Fortunately Unfortunately. Uh, for better or worse, we are going to start doing more of these warm-up uh, improv games, but I promise we won't we won't cross over into the boundary of improv. I loved improv and drama. Like it was one of my funniest thing. Like one of my most favorite things. I explained a lot. Specifically, the time when the the director had to call quit qu- quits because. Somehow I ended up pregnant in a high school drama club. But let's go. I bet that happens a lot more frequently than you think. I don't think there, but yes. Otherwise, all the teen mom shows wouldn't be a thing. Correct. Well, while neither of us are actors, half of us aren't funny. And I'll let the audience deduce which ones those are. So... The rules are very simple for the icebreaker. Uh, one person will provide a prompt. The next person is to continue that statement or that prompt with a statement starting with the word fortunately. The next person then will follow that person's prompt and offer kind of a dark counter uh, continuation of the story. So by it's starting a with very unfortunately. strict fortunately and then unfortunately and then fortunately and unfortunately. Yes. Uh, the example that I had seen on that website was the first person prompting, um, there once was an ant that lived in a giant's house. And then the next person said, fortunately, they put a bell on the ant because um, that way they could track where he was in the house. And then the unfortunately following that was, unfortunately, uh, the bell was so annoying that the uh, wife giant started throwing objects in the house or something like that. So I think we can come up with better. I think they'll be unhinged. Um, so I asked Kristen for a prompt earlier because I said I don't want to be the first prompt because uh, I, I would like to have a prompt that we can just work on together without yeah. me having the So the our advantage. co-writing. Yeah, sure. Uh, whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> I would have, oh, I think we make a fantastic I, I wouldn't have an advantage on knowing what it was. Unfortunately, like most things when it comes to what I am passionate about and love doing and ask for her opinion or contribution to, she doesn't do anything, so I end up doing it myself. So I did make the prompt for us. Okay. So are you ready for it? Yeah, let's get into it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, once upon a time, a dog went on an adventure far from home. Fortunately, the dog had a map to remember his way back. Unfortunately, the dog was very dyslexic. Fortunately, he found a fantastic friend along the way. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a Japanese host who ended up selling him for sex slaving. Fortunately, he managed to run away one time during a meet with a John. That was unfortunately, though, that he had to chew off his own leg to get away from the chains that he was attached to the bed. (laughs) 
Unfortunately, he found a nice box in a corner in an alley. Unfortunately, it was also infected, infested with rats, so they continued to gnaw on the open sores. Fortunately, it was behind a restaurant with a caring restaurant owner. Unfortunately, it was a Chinese restaurant, and they fucking chopped him up for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I can't continue with that. The dog's dead. <laughs> well, that, that seems to be the rule of it, is that when it comes to its natural conclusion, the actors feel like it's over, and so it's done. So I feel like I tried to bring it back so many times, and you were just like, "No, let's go deep from the get go." I, I really feel like that game is a counter of seeing who's gonna win if it's gonna be a fairy tale or a tragedy. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh my god! Well, uh, that was either a great entertainment for everybody, or it was more awkward than when you wake up drunk and from the night before with a uh, pain in your ass. <laughs> do you do that often? No, but uh, if I had, though, just like we will never visit this again, I would rather not talk about it. I feel like there is a hidden message in there, but uh, we won't talk about it. It's okay. Richard Gere taught me some things. <laughs> your advice last episode <laughs> no. oh, god damn it I already forgot my advice for today what was it <sighs> don't you worry it's all you you got time to think about it and I'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna drop you Where, who are you gonna go to for this isn't phone a friend this isn't who <laughs> wants to be a millionaire you don't get the phone a friend <laughs> Google. Google what I don't know, pointless life advice. I think you're going to have to keep drinking before you offer advice. <laughs> we'll get to that, though, in a moment. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, fortunately, unfortunately, uh, whether uh, or not you liked it or not, that was which one that was for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got the icebreaker, though. It may be the fastest icebreaker we've done. <laughs> you killed it fast. We, we had to go... <laughs> We have to go fast in the icebreaker because of all the bullshit that preceded it in the cold open that was about fart bags and colleges and I don't even know what we talked about anymore. That, I, I don't know, a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. It a was bunch of stuff. A train You'll see wreck. it on TikTok. Oh my God. All right, well, anyway, let's go ahead and since we can't bring it back on the track, we'll at least get it adjacent and rolling in <laughs> grass next to it. Sure. All right, so this is actually kind of adjacent to um, your your talks about your recent business uh, planning. Okay. Okay. Okay, it took me a moment, but okay. Okay. Uh, it's going to pay all the bills. We're fine. It's going to pay all of the bills. And we're soundproofing this, so the it's bills. fine. I wonder if that's a real reason we're soundproofing it, so I can pay all the bills and you guys won't hear. <laughs> don't look at me like that. I don't know what exactly that means. <laughs> Me working to pay all the bills. It's fine. <laughs> We're gonna pretend like we didn't talk about this. So that's why this segment is what a deal. <laughs> what a deal! Fucking roll the card. Step right up, step right up. Look at the amazing wares I've brought for you to ogle. Let's see here. This is all junk. Is that a half chewed on eraser? Ah, but could your ordinary half chewed eraser do this? Whoa! What a deal! So for this episode's What a Deal section, um, there are a lot of TikTok stars who promote and sell their own stuff. And, uh, yeah, I don't the know. TikTok shop. Yeah, well, this could have been maybe a, a mix between What a Deal and uh, Foolproof. Um, but are you familiar with the one TikTok girl who uh, was selling her farts in a jar? I feel like I heard about that. So I don't remember when it was. Oh, good. There's a Spass the Eagle. You remember that conversation? Actually, you probably don't remember that conversation because we got so fucking wasted and fucked up. That we sat here and flailed. <laughs> no, I remember. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember. Yeah. We were trying to figure out what Spastic Eagle looked like. Yeah. And you see, yeah, I could think about it with the uh, hands here <laughs> and the mouth here. <laughs> <laughs> Given full on demonstrations of what you thought it looked like. <laughs> I don't remember that much, but I remember like a little bit of it. <laughs> uh, this is her. 
Uh, Spastic Eagle Lady? No, not Spastic Eagle Lady. Oh, okay. This the is... The Fart in the Jar Lady. Yeah, the Fart in the Jar Lady. I wanted to give her a name, but... I don't know, I don't see it. Um, Alright, yeah, Fart in the Jar Lady. I guess that's what we'll call her anyway. <laughs> so she was doing it, and then actually become really dangerous for her. She was having intense stomach pains, and she had to go to the hospital to find out what was going on. And uh, so when she was there, they said, well, what has your diet been like? And she told her, told them that she eats like cheese and high protein yogurt and all this stuff to get her intestines really stirred up because she was literally farting into jars and selling it. Well, <clears throat> um, they told her that her stomach was hurting real bad because it was a bunch of gas buildup and uh, that she needed to stop doing what she was doing because it could harm her. And she could be uh, killed by it if it went real south. So they told her to stop doing it. So she decided to put a noggin to use, and she got herself a new business. Have you heard about her new business? No. She now sells her boob sweat. <laughs> Whatever works, boo boo. <laughs> I don't. I don't think you have to go that far. Like you're pretty cute, but like. So she is um, a 31-year-old uh, woman, or at least at the time of this writing, she was 31 uh, last year, so probably 32 now, only a year younger than me. Um, so she said that uh, she was making an up to $1,000 per fart jar when she was really doing this endeavor. And there's her in the hospital. Her little pretzels, her little non-farting pretzels. <clears throat> Uh, so it says that before uh, you start feeling too sorry for her, Steph made a full recovery. That's her name, Stephanie. Steph Maddo. Um, she now sells boob sweat instead. Uh, she previously, previously appeared on 90 Day Fiance and claiming putting a jar together for her fans took just 15 minutes. That's a pretty good work speed. 15 minutes for a thousand bucks. Okay, but like just because she can't eat stuff that'll like build up the gas doesn't mean she has to necessarily stop the fart jars and like why is this a fart themed episode but she doesn't have to necessarily stop it's the only fart jars the fart bags and, and one fart mentioned so far we're not it fart was like themed. the hot dog episode but anywho no i don't even remember what the other content is we might be on a fart path <laughs> um like which is whenever you have to fart keep a jar nearby grab it and then sell it and that you could you can raise the price on that boo boo because then it's more rare that you're doing it. What are people doing with it? Are they just smelling it? I mean, what could I guess you could try to inhale like helium. I don't know, but like once you open it, like it's not gonna last that long. A thousand dollars. Imagine being so pitiful <clears throat> you spent a thousand dollars to get a now it's fart. A, and now it's a rarity from her, so she can up her prices. <laughs> <laughs> probably not the right entrepreneurial. I hope she watches this. I know she probably won't. But we'll, we'll just tag her in like everything we you see. You should clip this and tag her in it. I'll just tag her, and then every day I'll tag her and comment on it until she finally pays attention to us. Yes. <laughs> we all... got a business plan for you, boo-boo. We're supporting you. It's fine. <laughs> well, unfortunately, she's not making nearly the same amount of money now that she is uh, filling boob sweat. Uh, she claims to be able to fill 10 bottles of sweat in jars in just one day. And then she only sells them for $500 a pop. But the sweat's a lot more versatile. <clears throat> you could taste that one. I mean, maybe you could taste the fart. I feel like it would last longer. Could you taste the fart? Anyway. Uh, oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, so after her, her selling it for $500 uh, uh, each, uh, she said, I love sitting by the pool, but it's also hard work. Don't be fooled. It's hard work to sit by the pool. Uh, she, Look, man, I don't sweat often, but it's got awful. She said, I also have a great set of breasts, and smelling the sweat, licking the sweat, would bring fans as close to as they can get to them. That's kind of a fucked up way to interpret that. I think it's a very self-conceited way. Maybe oh, it absolutely is. Into this. It absolutely is for her to uh, to be like, well, I sell it for five hundred dollars, and they love it because the closer they're ever gonna get to my great set of breasts. You do, you boo boo. Her name's Boo Boo, by the way. <laughs> got a great business plan for her, Boo Boo, and then you, do you Boo Boo. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, we get some more glamour shots of her. This was truly necessary. Sometimes it can it, be, it can vary how long it takes to fill up a jar, as it depends on several scientific factors, mainly the heat, movement, and how hydrated I am. I try to drink a lot of water and sit as much in direct sunlight as I can. So now she can get skin cancer. Oh, no. That's not safe. Her, her fucking skin is going to be very leathery Just, by the time she's 40. I, it, I wouldn't sit in the sun. I would go like sit in saunas or make my own in-home sauna for that. I just had a terrible OnlyFans idea. <laughs> we're not doing it. It's not happening. I wouldn't want to know if you were doing it. I was I thinking don't... about instead of selling. Oh man, this is gonna, this is going to make the episode because it's, it's actually related. It doesn't sound related, but it actually is. So instead of selling boob sweat, right? You're going to sell your vaginal fluids for masturbation or whatever. But you're going to use a bottle to do it and catch all the fluids because you're essentially treating yourself like a. Um, Oh my god, what are they called now? <coughs> you know where I'm going with this? What is it called? I hate that I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, I'm over here. Fucking getting high was a terrible idea. Yeah, it was. The soda stream. You're going to treat yourself like a soda stream and jam it up there until the job is done. And then collect the juices or the homemade soda. You could call yourself a little soda stream. Well, I'm so convinced that I need to go with Mr. Savage. <coughs> Both OnlyFans and podcast. I don't know. I think I like Little Soda Stream. It's like a rapper name, but for the dirty things you're going to do with a bottle. No. No, God, no. So you, know, you, you jam the bottle into the soda stream, and then you tilt it upright so that you get the fluids that you were hoping for, and it carbonates it. Whether or not you can carbonate your fluids is another matter that I don't really care to, or need to know, but we can uh, we can move on with the rest of this article if you like. I definitely don't think we should be let's talking go, to strangers on a Megal tonight. No, we can talk to strangers on a It's fine. It's fine. You're just cut off for the pen for from, from right now. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. I can't wait to tell Willard about this later. <laughs> Little soda stream. Trademark that shit. Someone's going to jump on it. No, they can have it. <laughs> At this point, Mr. Savage is sounding a whole lot better. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I, I should have asked him. I'm like, bro, that's that's my Twitch name. And your Twitch people know that, like, that's me. So are you sure you want that connected to that, too? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, my God. So Steph says she's taking precautions to protect herself, adding, I'm also trying to practice this craft as safely as possible with a proper SPF moisturizer. However, after the past week, I've learned that a simple SPF 30 won't be cutting it since I did burn my chest quite badly. No shit 30 SPF isn't going to do it. I mean, I'm not quite dark-skinned as she Well, she's not dark-skinned. She's tanned. Um, but... Uh, no, I, you're a ginger bitch. You're but yeah, I have to go, I have to have like a hundred to go out safely without burning for the day, and I still get red. I will say, looking at your arms, I am surprised that you tan a little bit because this is darker than this. Mm-hmm. Oh, my, so my arms are on the outside of my body, so makes sense. The fact that you tan at all is. Then there's my legs, which is another story entirely. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know what happened, but when we went to Myrtle Beach, like, I swear, like, all of me, all of my leg was exposed, but only the front half got burned. You were quite upset. Like, I mean, I was upset because I was in so much pain, but yeah, like, if I was in so much pain, why couldn't it be even all throughout? Man. Um, I can't get rid of this ad now. I think that's about it. Now we're talking about another girl's OnlyFans. Woman reaches top 0.4% of OnlyFans after allowing followers to make every decision in her life. If you don't give a shit about the consequences of your life, that's not a bad way to get rich really fast. Some fucked up people will pay you a lot of money just to tell you what to do. See, I kind of do care about the consequences of my life. Oh, I absolutely do. 
I mean, like, I, I think, like, <clears throat> to a point, yeah, sure. Um, I don't have to make as many decisions. But literally every little detail is a no-go. And then this last picture here of her uh, holding up a jar that I assume the sweat is in, or maybe that was her fart jar. I'm not sure. There's something in it. Yeah, uh, I looked at that and I thought it was a turd. I thought it was like for the upgraded members. Maybe people are spending a thousand dollars for a fart in a jar, but she'll literally shit in it for two grand. You're very focused on this fucking jar. And it doesn't give you answers. I scoured the uh, article. Even the description, the credit under the picture doesn't give any information. I don't... Are you still reading okay? A, a little, a, a little bit kind of looks like it's a toy. Why? Like, it can't be a turd. That's too, like, red and purple. I don't know. She's got a bad diet, obviously. That's too red and purple. And, like, you see it's flat here. You think it's a rose petal? It might be. Which I think would defeat the purpose of the fart. Or even the boob sweat. People are getting ripped off. I mean, they're buying her boob sweat. They're getting ripped off anyway, but they're definitely getting ripped off. Exactly. So that's what we got for what a deal. For $500, you can get some boob sweat. I don't think that's a deal. You're cute, boob, but not not $500 for boob sweat. Or you can subscribe to the Little Soda Stream for $500. We're not doing Little Soda Stream. <laughs> <laughs> I will <laughs> legit make it with Willard's idea right freaking now if you keep doing that. I love it so much. No! <laughs> no! Anyway, that's all I got now that I've got SodaStream brought up on my fucking website. <laughs> no! Oh, there's Karen's the... gonna be horrified. <laughs> that's a little. That's... No! Oh. I mean, she doesn't have to edit your porn, so I guess that'd be okay. Oh my god, no. <laughs> oh my god. All right, where do we go from here? What's the next segment? What is the meaning of life? I don't know. Not at this point. <laughs> All right, well. And you think I literally just said, I enjoy doing this? <laughs> I think you were like, bet, bitch. <laughs> you knew it was coming. You were like, so let's your, make you question everything. So your patrons. So anyway, from one nut job to another, things get a little bit crazier. Uh, maybe you heard about this in the news at some point. Did you hear about the woman in the UK? This sounds like a bad punchline setup. It's not. This is very much a real story from what I've been able to tell. Uh, have you have you heard about the woman in the UK that married a ghost? No. Okay. Well, you're about to learn about her today then. That doesn't surprise me, though. <laughs> well, it is a, a special enough article that she's going to make our newsworthy Neanderthal for the week. Congratulations. Oh, oh, ah, breaking news. This just in. <laughs> Everyone, big dumb. Well, this is the lovely peach we're looking at today. She looks like she married a ghost. <laughs> she absolutely does. <coughs> I wonder if she insists that he's in the photos with her. You could look at the party. He could be like right here, and he could be over here. No. You never know. I do. I absolutely know. I absolutely know everything. All right. So this nutter was to find out what happened to their perfect relationship. Oh, something happened. Oh, it did. It's ending. Oh, I guess it's not all uh, happy in the afterlife. So, uh, she is a singer. I've never heard of her in my life. Uh, her last name is Brocardi? Brocardi, maybe? I don't know. I don't fucking make the rules. I'm just telling you what's going on here. Oh, I think that's not her real name. I think that's her performance name because it doesn't actually give a name. Anyway. There's a second clap for you, Karen. Um, what is going on over there? I'm going to make you start taking shots for her. Tell me you love your phone. She 
pops up easily on Google. Oh, well, I assume so. She was famous for if not her singing for this story. She has a whole website. I'm sure she does. Is the creator of an enchanting world where dark, haunting aesthetics meet passion fueled lyrics and design. She is a dynamic storyteller who marries both music and fashion in an orchestral explosion designed to make the ears and eyes bleed. Okay. Well, something that's a little bit nicer of her is uh, she, she says she met her spirit husband, uh, Eduardo, one stormy night in 2021. Oh, they weren't even together for very long. No, they weren't. It's. 2023 he met her or she met him when they're divorcing already yes uh they met when he first burst into her bedroom and immediately professed his love for her honey why are you trusting a ghost like that uh she does say i'm pretty sure that i think uh, that was her issue i think he was a civil war era ghost is what she says in the uk yeah We'll, we'll, we'll find it. It's either on this article or the other article I want to look at. You have two articles about her. Is marrying there? a ghost. Okay. Well, because the first one I saved it just so I'd remember the story. And then when I actually went to it, I realized the story was like four sentences long. I was like, I should probably find another article about this too. All right. Anyway. Um, so anyway, that's how it started, and they became inseparable, she says, when the ghost even started sending her cryptic messages in the shower. <laughs> because, you know, what's more loving than, I see you naked. I'm going to say he's writing in the steam on the mirror. Yeah. Maybe he's writing her, like, poetry, or he's just, like, bend their ass over, bitch. Um, all of the Civil War era innuendos for I want to fuck you, duh. Oh, is that what he's doing? Obviously. Uh, obviously. I'm so sorry. I didn't fucking understand how this worked out. Obviously. <sighs> the article goes on to say, but it didn't take long before cracks began to appear in their otherworldly relationship. Uh, Brocarde previously claimed herself and Eduardo had been arguing over their wedding date. First bit of trouble. They can't decide when they're going to get married. She said, I want a summer wedding, but he hates the heat, and I'd secretly love to make him melt. But he disappears often enough as it is. What fucking kind of statement is that? <laughs> She's already talking about how much she wants to see him suffer because she gets off on it. That doesn't sound like a healthy relationship. No, it is my marriage. Anyway. Uh, no, it's my neighbors. <laughs> uh, she goes on to say, for weeks we got nowhere with it, so I'm going to design a Ouija board of wedding dates to see which one we're both drawn to. I don't know how that works out because then aren't you letting another spirit decide your wedding date instead? Or is he going to cheat and use <laughs> his powers? <coughs> there is a chance that another one decides for them. Or joins them. They might be their unicorn. <coughs> oh, they're a polygamous couple. Yeah, they're, they're ghost unicorn. Although I don't know if you could have two ghosts. I think you have to change it up a little bit. There's probably like a demon or something. Ooh. That's kinky. There's there's definitely videos of that, especially Baldur's Gate three coming out. One of the one of the NPC players you can have is a, uh, um, I think she's a tiefling, but she's like very muscular and she's got a low set cut of armor. Everyone's calling her Dommy Mommy. Of course. <laughs> Unrelated, but kind of related, I guess, in the same way. Uh, there's every game needs a Dommy Mommy a dom- apparently. <laughs> apparently. Uh, she said, I swear he turned into a complete groomzilla and his list of demands grows daily. And Waters always uh, had a temperamental nature, but the nuptials seemed to be bringing out the worst in him. So as the wedding got closer and closer, they kept fighting, apparently over the vows. She also claimed the spirit often took issue with her discussing the relationship publicly, though this <clears> didn't keep her from appearing on this morning and posting the wedding ceremony on Instagram. There's a whole ass video you can watch of her standing there by herself. Not by herself with Eduardo. Come on. Um, well, after the marriage was officiated, Brocarde also complained that they'd fallen out over Eduardo getting too drunk during their honeymoon in Wales. And now he's temperamental, and now he's a drinker. I'm a drinker. It's fine. This is going well. I'm a fun drinker, though. Like, come on. I'm funny. I'm entertaining. Well, I'm not a mean drunk. Eduardo's not a fun drunk, evidently. 
Well, if I mean, I guess if he's temperamental sober, I can see that. It does say, though, that in the months since their, uh, their honeymoon, she claims that the spirit had become increasingly possessive. A term they chose possessive, the whole thing about ghosts. <laughs> I don't so think is he was... possessing people or is he just like is that kind of like scaring s- off the people around her? Someone, I think he was just he was probably just haunting everyone and telling them to get the fuck out. Leave her alone, never call her again. I don't, she doesn't go into detail because she's a wackadoodle. 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 Wackadoodle or something like that. Wackadoodle. <laughs> is that why you have a bunch of like <laughs> spaghetti noodles popping the whole <laughs> <laughs> but it's like so the game whack-a-mole uh-huh. but spaghetti noodles instead of moles and they just kind of wiggle up like snakes and you whack them with the hammer is that what whack-a-noodle whack-a-noodle is? yeah it's also probably a um an urban dictionary oh, we can we can make a submission to the urban dictionary uh it's when you're mad at your male counterpart <laughs> But you don't want to get revenge. You don't want him to know that you're mad, so you wait till it's sexy time later that night. And then when you get a nice and hard in the mood, fucking whack the noodle. Absolutely. We should do that. No. Oh, the no. other dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant straight up dick punching me. I was like, no, no. I'm, not, I'm not on par with that. That no. sounds terrible. If anything, I get Chris to do it. Don't get Chris to punch my dick. <laughs> I don't make me the saddest boy in the whole neighborhood. <laughs> Where's this going? I don't know. The ghost, the ghost continues to disappoint. Uh, whatever the fuck her face is, um, this is derailed so bad. Uh, his apparent fascination with Mar- uh, Marilyn Monroe appears to have proven a further obstacle to their marital bliss. After Brocardi claims to have spotted the spirit in the late night, ho- the late Hollywood actresses. Wait, the late act, late Hollywood actress. There we go. Uh, at the chapel, so the ghost of Marilyn Monroe came to watch the Civil War ghost get married to a modern age emo bitch. Okay. All right. So long as that makes sense to you. Okay, I'm following. I guess. She also told Wales Online that he would routinely disappear and then emerge days later smelling of Chanel Number no. Five, Miss Monroe's favorite perfume. You can smell a ghost, okay? You can smell a ghost on another ghost, okay? So that was the reason they're getting divorced. Now, this other article, there was a couple other things I wanted to touch on here. Uh, there we go. Um. So she said in this article, he grew increasingly more aggressive and nasty and began to haunt me with the sound of a screaming baby. <laughs> you know, good shit. Uh, I concluded... Oh, oh, God, I made a mistake and I got a full picture of her. Uh, <laughs> I concluded the only way to get rid of Eduardo was to exercise him. So I embarked on the heroin process in the chapel that we got married in. After hours, he was finally purged from my system. I feel light and free and excited to be released of this troubled spirit. So she didn't divorce him. She essentially murdered him. She got an exorcism to cast him into hell or something. Well, that is, uh, that's going nuclear for sure. I, I think they had a nice little tribute to their love here. This is described as devilishly handsome. The entity immediately declared his love for the singer-songwriter of the night they met. I bet that was the last time she was in a band and became a solo artist. <laughs> was when she announced that a ghost broke into a room and professed his love for her. Was she in a band before? I don't know. I don't know anything about this girl. Woman. She's 40. Um, recalling the unearthly encounter, Brocardi said... I don't want to know who Brocardi is. No, just like she looks like she's going through her emo phase, and also um, a midlife crisis at the same time. I've never heard of her before, but she has a whole website for her, and like, I feel like it tells a life story, but I promise you, I'm not going to read it. Um. She says, I met Eduardo when he burst into my room uninvited one dark stormy night. Unsettled and unable to sleep, I tossed and turned, preoccupied by an argument I'd had with my friend. It was an upsetting night and rain was lashing at the windows. 
Out of nowhere, I felt an intense burning in my heart. The sensation slowly moved throughout my whole body, making me tingle. Oh. And uh, and down and out through my toes. I think she's bragging that she had a curl, toe-curling orgasm from this ghost. The very first night they met? Is that the night she's talking about? I assume so. Uh, she says, I was compelled upright in bed, forced into a sitting position. I reached back to turn on my bedside light, but my hand was forced back away. I tried again this time. I was able to pull the cord. I don't know. This sounds a bit rapey, actually. I don't know that this is this is the romantic thing that she thinks it is. The singer says she felt warmth on the back of her neck. A warm breath on my neck whispered, I love you, as the spirit departed and the room fell cold. I was left shaking and trembling in bed as tears streamed down my face. Tears? So you were traumatized, but you married. I, I think the Ghostbusters need to get in with the um, SVU Special Victims Unit. Yeah, probably. It sounds like their territory. Uh, she says, after this, Eduardo would repeat to reveal himself to be... Oh, his... Or, or, Oh, oh boy. Reveal himself to his wife to be with more frequency, where she would admire his alluring appearance and tone of voice. Oh, he's a Victorian soldier. It makes sense that he's in the UK. He's not a Yankee. Okay. Uh, I saw his images of the Victorian soldier. He was always in uniform, even on our wedding day. His face is devilishly handsome, shoulder length, unruly hair. He looks lib. He looks lived in, well worn, troubled, met, troubled almost, and there's a pain attached to his being. It sounds like he showed up in a pair of grungy ass jeans, disheveled hair, and unruly facial hair. It just. They can't ever marry an ugly ghost, could they? It has to be handsome. Well, though I suppose you have to be attracted to the person that you're marrying, unless it's for money. Exactly. Sometimes money is everything, especially when you make it off of being a living soda stream. I'm... No! <laughs> uh, his voice is commanding and forceful, yet he whispers to seduce. Again, the, they, they uh, redress um, that uh, him coming back smelling like Chanel number no. five was a, a, a big uh, trife in their relationship. Oh, Eduardo became a uh, influence. Oh, she's an influencer. I thought she was saying he became an influencer. She was like, "Whoa, how did he get the following <laughs> of all these nuts?" Uh, he became possessive of the influencer with 185,000 Instagram following. Do you think any of the other ones were ghosts too? Who knows? If he became that possessive. She, uh, she said he would allegedly flip between acting in a threatening way to then being warm and intense. So he was either fighting or fucking. It sounds like. Oh, it doesn't sound healthy. No, oh, I'm sure that's perfectly normal. The woman recalls her relationship had always been turbulent from the beginning with the stark contrast of him being threatening and possessive and then warm and intense, but I slowly began to tire being married to a free spirit. He was inconsistent and barely present. He is a ghost. <laughs> I'm starting to think maybe she wasn't married a ghost. I think she decided to marry one of her um, early onset Alzheimer illusions. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't a schizophrenic hallucination? That could very well be as well. It could very well be schizophrenia. Like, who Who knows? It's really not her or Eduardo. I don't know that Eduardo still around. She was going to get him exercised. Uh, she goes on to saying um, the spooky soldier's crush on the late actress Marilyn Monroe transpired on their wedding day when he reportedly spotted Miss Monroe in the chap chapel. Eduardo would then allegedly disappear for days at a time and return reeking of Miss Monroe's iconic perfume scent. He would brush past Bracco Bra 
Brocade? They call her Brocade in this one now. Whatever her name is. They probably just misspelled it. And the smell would fill the room. So, <clears throat> Marilyn and Eduardo didn't know each other before the wedding. Apparently not, but she did show up for the wedding, and they've been fucking behind Riccardi's back this entire time, I guess. I don't know. Do you think that's what Marilyn Monroe's ghost does? Is she just goes to weddings and see what kind of weddings she can destroy? Or, like... She could have fucking come to mind. I mean, I know there was that, that rumor or theory or whatever it is that her and JFK were... It's interesting how many, like well-beloved leaders have things like that. Like Martin Luther King Jr. was also uh, unfaithful, too. It's like, these people that were really put up on a pedestal were just people. <laughs> but at the same point, and like, it also kind of makes you wonder, like, did it really happen then, or was it just people trying to ruin their image? Because, you know, they are on a pedestal. I don't know. We tear people I, down because that's the kind of... I, I did listen. People we are at this point. I did listen to a podcast on JFK's life, and I think that <coughs> it might have been that he was very flirty or something like that. He it wasn't like the first time he had been kind of like unfaithful to Jackie, I think, or something. Like that. I don't know. There was speculation. The There's also a thing because during the previous times in history, like it didn't matter if a man was unfaithful or not, the woman had to stay. Bitches be tripping. History was a called awful time if you had boobs and a vagina. It's going so well now, huh? I, history always repeats itself. I'm convinced that it happens, and it like I guess they're trying to repeat. I I, I don't know. History repeats itself though, and it's it's not okay. There we go. So, Ricardo. Whatever her name is. I'm, for, I'm sure I've changed it like five times now. Um, <laughs> it says she felt disrespected and needed to consult with a psychic to learn how to assert her boundaries. So she came to the conclusion the journey with Eduardo had no positive conclusion <clears throat> and his energy was dragging her down. There was no breakup conversation. I consulted a psychic medium to help me assert my boundaries over Eduardo and to try to tame him, but it didn't work. <laughs> Sounds like marriage counseling, but like insert, enslaving, enslaving your partner instead of working to a mutual conclusion. Yes. Receiving advice from the medium only infuriated Eduardo, who allegedly began to haunt her with the sound of a shrieking baby. He's really got a, an M.O. here. <clears throat> she says this was the final straw. Um, she returned back to the chapel where they had previously exchanged vows, this time, though, to exercise him. She since released a song afterwards called Just Another Anthem, which contains details of the split. So she's the weird UK gothic version of Taylor Swift. I haven't listened to this song. I didn't know didn't this. did God Charlie have a Just Another Anthem, though? I don't know. What I do know is that I haven't listened to the song yet. I didn't even know she was a singer when I found this article. So I'm hoping somebody will listen to it and let us know what it sounds like. Oh, so you mean you're not subjecting us to that tonight? No, I think we've subjected people to enough. I wonder how much Karen's going to have to cut up. So much. She's not going to be content <laughs> with how much she gets paid. For our sweet talk. Alright, so that's what I got on... Uh, Miss Brocardi. She says, since the exorcism, she's feeling a lot more light and relieved and joyous. You do you, boo boo. Which is generally what you feel like after an exorcism, though. I don't know how long. It didn't give me a timeline or anything, but it sounds like it all was pretty rapid. So that, you good, bro? Yeah. Getting a little sleepy? Getting a little late for you? No. When you yawn, it's, the ox it's your brain not getting enough oxygen. And we know I have brain cancer. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we sound like such god awful people, I swear. Maybe we are. I was gonna say we're really not, but maybe we are. We definitely are. That's why this works. That's why we're funny. <laughs> you want to talk about Canadians? They're nice people. 
I don't know. I remember very early on you thought I was talking shit about Canadians when I really wasn't. You did. You were bitching at them for sending smoke our way. Oh, my God. That's not their fault. It's nature. I never said a bad word about Canadians. I said the wildfires there were causing issues. Oh, I think I made a mistake. We're not talking about Canadians this time. We're talking about Americans, so fuck off, Canada. This isn't about you. We love you, Canada. Fuck yeah. America. You know, 5% of our listenership is in Canada. 5%? Yeah. We also got um, someone from the Philippines, too, which is bizarre how that happened. I can't fathom who from the Philippines listened, but that's quite a reach. <coughs> I don't know, because most of my Discord seems to be uh, our time zone. So our side of the, like, not our, like, area, but, like, our side of the... Oh, kind so. Great, Chug. Chug? I'm not chugging, bitch. I just need a drink, and it's all I have. I didn't bring water. A healthy choice. The only other thing I drink. We have water for here. For loco or water. No, all the water upstairs. I know. I didn't grab when I was when I was up there. I took your bad influence and grabbed my other drink. And then brought me another drink too. Um, yes, we're not talking about Canadians. I lied. I'm sorry. Who are we talking about? Arizona people. Apparently. Arizona Arizona people aren't Canadians. They're definitely not. <laughs> I'm so confused. I swear I thought this article took place in, in uh, Ottawa. I'm so confused. And as I opened it up, it goes on to talk about um, the city in Arizona. <laughs> it's I'm definitely so not confused. Ottawa. <laughs> it's fine. I just went like country blind for a second. I'm so confused. <laughs> Why are you so confused? Are we talking about people in Arizona or are we talking about Canadians? I just told you we're talking about people in Arizona. Okay. <laughs> in Oatman, Oatman, Arizona. That's why I thought it was Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told, I, I talked about in a previous episode that I failed world studies, all right? I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, so this isn't on me. I was very forward about my ability to tell one place from another. But this this takes place not in Ottawa, but Oatman, Arizona. <laughs> talk about a contest for what it is. not what a sport <laughs> that's what I call sports this is what I call sports let's go <laughs> hey man welcome to the pad ah uh, sick you got a couple of lazy boys food spread I'm ready to watch the game <laughs> yeah for sure man uh, just have a seat I'll grab us a couple beers uh why are we watching a bunch of people tow wrestle? Isn't it great? Now that's what I call sports. So in 1983, in Oatman, Arizona, uh, Fred Eck founded the annual Solar Egg Frying Contest, where participants use homemade contraptions to fry an egg under 15 minutes. So in order to do this, um, they use any tools or... Uh, materials that are at their disposal, they they figure out and bring. Apparently, um, other places have also attempted to cook eggs. Maybe they did in Canada. We don't know. Maybe our five percent listenership in Canada will be happy to tell us if they do it too. Did what? Fried eggs on the sidewalk, Kate. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. I don't think you thought I said anything. <laughs> no. I, no. <laughs> I thought you said. This is going dark fast. <laughs> I just had to double check. Okay. I don't know if it gets hot enough in Canada, but if someone could let us know, like, I'm actually curious Well, now. since they are being jerkwads and blowing smoke in our direction, I'd say it's pretty hot there. Are they still blowing smoke in our direction? I don't know anymore, honestly. I've stopped hearing about it, but you stop hearing about everything after a while because another terrible thing is happening somewhere else. Yep. Like the Morocco earthquakes, and then before that was the 
Maui fires. Yep. I was lucky bastards to get to die, and still here we are. <laughs> they can light your house on fire, it's fine. <sighs> then I gotta live in it. Because it probably wouldn't kill me, I would just get thrown in prison for arson. No, we just need to set something time for when we're all passed the fuck out. We all get really fucked up the night before, and so we don't wake up and then boom. I promise I'm not <laughs> suicidal. Sounds a. I just have a really dark Sounds like dark a hell of a plan sometimes. you got worked out there, Kate. I just have a really dark mind sometimes. You, you like, you give me a, a thing, and I, I like, I want to figure it out. That's what I do. I'm. I promise I'm not suicidal. So I gave you how to not survive a suicide attempt, and that's what you came up with. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go talk to some nice people after we get here. In 2013, an anonymous YouTube video from Death Valley National Park had people braving 120 degree heat to attempt to fry eggs directly on the rocks. In 2015, Australia, temperatures reaching 111 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and sparked a trend where YouTubers try to fry eggs on the sidewalks. So this whole thing in 1983 is kicked off. People trying to fry eggs on extremely hot days. I think someone in the Discord once offered to do that if they ever had a day hot enough. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I remember hearing about it, but I don't remember who it was or where it was. So I'm not going to pretend to bullshit that I have the answers because I don't. Um, but apparently in addition to this, on really hot days as we continue to break record heats, scientists have tried to figure out whether or not they could do something like bake cookies in a hot car because they get super hot because they trap all the I heat feel like in. I've heard about that too. And so I think they have succeeded in successfully baking them. They are technically baked. Uh, it took like, I think it was like four hours out in like a 120 degree car or something like that. And uh, and so they said it was successful. They, they were cooked. They just weren't like that crispy, good finished cookie kind of texture. They're kind of still soft. A lot of people like soft cookies. A lot of people like people who are soft in the head. <laughs> so that's that's that segment. Um, okay. Cool. Fourth of July, everyone we, go to the side. We can end it there. That's fine. Oh, I had a lot of things here. <laughs> We've done a lot of people a disservice. <laughs> Especially Karen. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Uh, how many more segments? We got we one have? left. That's okay. all we got. Okay, let's finish it out. All right. So, if you're ready for yep. this week's Worst of Humanity, I actually have a little video prepared for us. Okay. Uh, this is a story that I think might have been submitted to like another famous um, podcast that uh, just kind of got spread around, but somebody made a little stick figure illustration of it with it to make it a little more entertaining. Okay. So Karen can do a service to. I'm sorry, I just hit my mic. Karen can do a service to everybody and just put it over our faces so that you don't have to watch us watching something. I think that makes it a little bit less awkward for all of us. Except for the freaks that enjoy it. You okay. Ready, ready to watch? Yeah. All right, let's get into this week's uh, Worst of Humanity. Oh my God, who thinks of this shit? Hey, quick, come here, take a look at this. Uh, why would you show me that? I don't want to suffer alone. This is the worst of humanity. So the story takes place, uh, I'll, I'll just let it uh, do all the, uh, the explaining the situation, but this was a accident report that a bricklayer had to make after the incident that he had caused. All right, here we go. Dear sir, I am writing in response to your request for additional information in block three of the accident report form. I put poor planning as the cause of my accident. You asked for a fuller explanation, and so I trust the following details will be sufficient. I'm a bricklayer by trade. On the day of the accident, I was working alone on the roof of a new six-story building. When I completed my work, I found that I had some bricks left over, which, when weighed later, were found to be slightly in excess of 250 kilos. Rather than carry the bricks down by hand, I decided to lower them in a barrel using a pulley, which was attached to the side of the building on the sixth floor. <laughs> Securing the rope at ground level, I went up to the roof, swung the barrel out, uh, and completely loaded it with bricks. Then I went down to the ground floor and untied the rope. 
Holding it tightly to ensure a slow descent of the bricks, you will note in block 11 of the accident report form that I weighed 70 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> Due to my surprise at being jerked off the ground so suddenly, I lost my presence of mind and forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I proceeded at a rapid rate of knots up the side of the building. <laughs> In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel, which was now proceeding downwards at an equally impressive speed. <laughs> this explained the fractured skull, minor abrasions, and the broken collarbone, as listed in section 3 of the accident report form. <laughs> Slowed only slightly, I continued my rapid <laughs> ascent, not stopping until the fingers of my right hand two were two knuckles deep into the pulley. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fortunately, by this time, I'd regained some presence of mind and I was able to hold on tightly to the rope in spite of be beginning to experience pain because my knuckles were in the pulley. At approximately the same time, however, the barrel of bricks hit the ground and the bottom of the barrel fell out. <laughs> now devoid of the weight of bricks, the barrel weighed approximately 20 kg. I refer to you uh, to, again to my weight, 70 kg. As you can imagine, I began a rapid descent down the side of the building. <laughs> Six stories. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming up. <laughs> this accounts for the two fractured ankles, broken tooth, and several lacerations of my, on my legs and lower body. Here, my luck began to change slightly. The encounter with the barrel seemed to slow me enough to lessen my injuries when I fell into a pile of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, only three vertebrae were cracked. I am sorry to report, however, as I lay there on the pile of bricks in pain, unable oh. to move, I again lost my composure and presence of mind and let go of the rope. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. and lay there watching the empty barrel begin its journey back down towards me and then eventually on top of me and this explains the two broken legs i hope this i hope this answers your inquiry oh. <laughs> so i'm sure it was uh it was submitted to another podcast and then they were the ones that were reading it and adding commentary and then somebody made this beautiful stick figure illustration that we'll have karen throw up for people to look at uh, <laughs> um, I feel like it's very important that if you're going to try to outsmart a system and make your job easier while probably violating several OSHA violations, you should probably make sure that it's at least a sound plan and not going to end up like that. See, I don't understand because there's a song. And I, I like. I, it's probably not well known considering that Neighbor One like showed it to us growing up, but it is. It is a story about bricklayers and they they did something similar you know there was a dude up top and they would load the bricks into a wheelbarrow and with the pulley system they would load it up and then at some point the wheelbarrow fell and killed someone because it landed on their head so significantly worse story I, I <laughs> not because like, of I your telling like but because i remember growing up this with. guy broke several things you're talking about people dying because they didn't do their job right <laughs> i just like i feel like there was a song about this like I feel like it was one of the fucked up songs I grew up with. Uh, I wish we got stories like that submitted to us instead of people <laughs> calling in about corn shit on their dildo that they didn't mean to receive. And I don't know. I'm so most concerned about that uh, second call we had. My name is, is uh, I almost said George now, because looking at you, <laughs> you play in my head asking if I, you could call me George. Uh, you're a dingy bitch. You could change your name to Tony. No one calls you that. Ugh. I'm gonna make women call me Tony in the bedroom. Oh, God, she'll hate that. I've tried to do so many things that she would hate just for the, the story of it, and I don't do it because of the fear of her. Good plan. Good plan. So that's our worst of humanity, then. Um, that's it. It's just short, sweet, fire, funny. Uh, someone else's work that we just took entirely, but I'm, I'm okay with that. As the the brand that I'm bringing, to just let other people dream of the work, and I'll take the glory. I found like I feel like that's newsworthy Neanderthals. <laughs> <laughs> Your face, you hate me so much. You want to fire me, don't you? It's not too late. Ah, you said earlier my job is safe. That was earlier. That was before two hours of bullshit. 
I would really cry. I actually really do enjoy this. Let's get let's get to the end of it then. Why you still have a job at least? Okay. Okay. Uh, so I think to wrap things up, that's going to do it for us this episode. Uh, I apologize. I think I don't know if we're if we're supposed to apologize for the experience that we've just provided. I feel like we came to offer <coughs> a product or a service worth their while. <coughs> I'll do that again, since you died for a little bit. Um, I feel like in one hand we're offering them a service that we thought was a good thing, but in the end we ended up with this. <laughs> well, it also all depends on the final cut, you know? We, we, we thought we were bringing them manure for their flower bed, but it just ended up being <laughs> my Taco Bell explosion because we ran out of manure at the store that I work at. I don't know who would shit in a bag because I ran out of manure. I know every customer matters. We have to get this order no matter what. I know what to do. That's going to be in the episode. You know damn well it is. <laughs> well, I guess in this point, I do a duo of everyone an apology for what you've witnessed here. Today. <laughs> Uh, in a moment, we're going to put all the pressure on Kate and force her to distribute some wisdom to you that she has definitely forgotten what she was going to say before. So it should be good, I have no doubt. Uh, if you want to follow us in the meantime to get in contact with us, find out what we're up to, uh, find out our social medias, you can follow us at all of our places at overdueforextinction.com, where you can also send in voicemails, as two lovely people have done for us on the last episode. Um, if you want to follow me specifically, uh, I am on TikTok, Threads, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and Facebook, all of them feeling dragon. Um, Kate, do you have any place that you want people to follow you so they can stop looking not, through your windows? Not quite yet, but it probably won't be Little Soda Stream. I can tell you that much right now. I'm going to go make every account Little don't, Soda Stream. Don't oh my dare. god. I'm going to give you all of the logins <laughs> and be like, Kate, I give this to you. No, don't you dare. All right, future follow at Kate at Little Soda Stream. No. And um, uh, if, <laughs> uh, if you want what this wasn't supposed to be, but turned out to be this uh, intoxicated, inebriated episode, uh, we do a lot of this as bonus content over on the Patreon. <laughs> and like we mentioned, for just three dollars a month, you can get the. Um, two episodes currently but we're gonna work on another one it's one a month right one a month minimum one a month minimum i think oh, the shit. first two episodes were a couple weeks apart so i didn't know you were posting them a bit fast though yeah I, i'm just kind of editing them and getting them on there so we can go to library as fast as we can and you know for now like a month we're supposed to do a mega interviews and we should do it next time next time next time okay we'll do it next week because next week we won't necessarily have to record an episode because this is ready that's true indeed so um any fun TikTok ideas for us to do next week, too? Yeah, anything like that. Uh, Though it'll be very late by the time it gets to them. That's true. But it won't be next we'll week. We'll just be sitting here for two weeks, <laughs> twiddling our thumbs until they finally get us some content. Well, if, if we record, if we record an episode, the week an episode comes out, then the middle week we can do TikToks. That's true. So it does make sense. So, like, send us ideas to do next Give week. Give us dumb shit to do on TikTok so we can entertain you. Because you made two people do dumb shit and we followed your instructions against God damn, it's fucking you know, thank you for me. We followed your instructions against bad judgment. Maybe we can start charging for the really bad shit. That's what your your goal is to charge for the bad shit. Not that bad shit. I meant like the drink challenge shit again. Oh that was tough again. Alright, well I think I bought you enough time. What words of wisdom do you have to dispense to our listeners for this week to carry on through their lives? <clears throat> well, I think I'm going to go back to our ghost marriage. Okay. Uh, here's some advice. If you hear weird noises in the middle of the night, just make weirder noises to assert your dominance so you don't end up in the same situation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this is going to play out in uh, a home burglary. <laughs> I'm 
I guess I didn't think about that. I guess I was just thinking about ghosts when I thought of that. But now I'm thinking like it's like the penis <laughs> game to see who can see who can shout penis the loudest before the other person back to them from having to top it. Oh, absolutely. If someone ever broke it, I would absolutely just be like opening my door and yelling penis because like it'll be soundproof. You won't hear anything otherwise. All right, there you go. So if you're gonna face a haunting, make weird noises and the spirits making. And if you have a home burglary happening into your home, make sure you start the penis game and see if the, the robber is down, I guess. For It'll what? I don't know. Away. Like, just imagine a man breaks into your house and you just, PENIS! That's when you have a uh, naked Grammy living with you and you just leave her <laughs> out on the couch. <laughs> she gets, she's so desperate, she gets excited when any man walks in. <laughs> <laughs> that should be today's advice. It's been 84 <laughs> years. Leave desperate granny on the couch to, just in case someone breaks just in. Just in your case house. somebody breaks in, she can rape them. <laughs> I haven't felt a thing in a minute, boy. It's time for you to get down and find out if anything else tingles. Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. There uh, you go. There I, you have it. I can't vouch for her advice, but I guess what I can do is say what we say every episode, and that is to stay safe and stay smart. And I still think it's asking too much. Bye. <laughs> Overdue for extinction.